Thank you, Nick, and, and thanks um, everyone for being here, and thanks for the opportunity to come join you today. Uh, Nick asked me to talk about a study that we conducted over the last couple of years, a statewide assessment of, ev of evapotranspiration networks. Pat Scarth talked a little bit about ET and how it's applied in estimating crop water use and how it is used to, irrigate, um, to schedule irrigation, to fine tune our irrigation management. I want to acknowledge the team that worked on this project. It was a, a wide effort. We also had great co cooperation from our counterparts in the Texas ET Network, Guy Phipps. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But we really did have a, a good, um, a broad participation across the state, and we appreciate the efforts, especially Jed, who had to put the whole big fat report together. And there are a few copies back in the back if you're interested. What is ET? Hopefully you're familiar with evapotranspiration. You're just talking about the total crop water demand estimated from atmospheric water demand. So it's um, the water removed by the plant through transpiration as well as evaporation from the soil and wet surfaces. Uh, we apply um, math, a computer model, to estimate a reference crop evapotranspiration. We adjust that for crop specific evapotranspiration or crop water demand uh, by a, a, a growth curve um, driven um, crop coefficient curve. So, so we can adapt it for different crops as we have data available. Key data that we need to estimate or calculate evapotranspiration, air temperature, humidity, solar radiation, and wind speed. We need all these data to, and they need to be accurate. You know, the garbage in, garbage out. We need good, accurate information to get a good, accurate estimate of ET. The objectives of this work included working on identifying existing ET networks and other possibly or hopefully applicable weather station networks across the state and in bordering states so that we can get an idea of what's available, what are the ac um, accuracy of the data and the ET if they're calculating them, um, what are some alternative data sources that we may be looking at. Um, quality control procedures, uh, management of the networks. We also looked at conducting a sensitivity analysis about what if our, our sensors were a little bit out of calibration, what did that do to our estimates of ET, and, and ultimately what would that do to estimates of water demand. Since evapotranspiration is used in irrigation scheduling as well as uh, regional and statewide water, water resources allocations, um, if you start thinking about the implications of that and how we fight about water, these numbers are important, and the accuracy of these numbers and the defensibility of these numbers is important. We looked at, um, we meaning Jed, looked at a, 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 a database of calibration data from a commercially available um, sensor calibration. Um, people send in their sensors, get them calibrated. We have, we have by location by time between calibrations and looking at the drift over time and with uh, different environmental influences so that we could, could, could come up with some recommendations for calibrations and some ideas of, of sensor drift and sensor inaccuracy issues. Uh, we evaluated and compared data from different ET networks and ET agricultural and non-agricultural um, networks that had weather stations nearby to see how how accurate or how reasonable it would be to, to use some of these alternate data sources. Then, of course, we wanted to provide some recommendations for the sensor applications, for calibrations, for site maintenance, and, and other issues. In the ET, uh, first thing we did was identify the networks. We went around statewide, and they were, there are a number of different uh, sources of data statewide, actually there were fewer than we thought because between the time we started the project and the time we ended the project, several ET networks folded due to various issues. Uh, budgetary constraints is a big one and the other one is staffing issues. So if I lose the one person that's managing the network and he moves on to greener pastures or retires and his replacement or maybe he's not replaced or maybe he's replaced by a professional that's got other priorities, that's, that network may may be dis decommissioned, and that has happened. This project was focusing on those networks that were designed to provide ET data, but like I said, we wanted to evaluate alternative data sources as well. 
some reasons for establishing networks. Now, first of all, we're, we're looking at, most of us are familiar with the agricultural meteorolo meteorological stations, the ag weather, that we were looking at those parameters for ET. But there are a lot of other networks out there looking at forecasting weather, looking at uh, drought mitigation, looking at specific scenarios. And so we wanted to look at why those were built and that helps explain the context and the siting conditions and the reasons they put those stations where they did and, and the reason they selected the, the sensor heights, for instance, or the sensor selections that they, that they chose. The data that we're looking at uh, repeated there, the temperature, relative humidity, wind, and solar radiation. Some of the networks did not, didn't report all of these data. Um, data parameters, but some can be estimated. For instance, solar radiation can be estimated. Or wind speed, if we don't have wind speed at the correct height, there are some um, mathematical procedures that we can follow that we can adjust for the height that we want. Of course, there are some inerit, you know, inherent um, inaccuracies in those, but at least we can get an estimate. Some agricultural meteorological networks that we investigated are listed here. That We looked into all of these. Um, some of the non-ag networks that we considered, you want to consider, if it's an ag network even, you want to make sure before I really want to put too much stock in the data, I want to get, get an idea that it really is accurate, that they have good quality control, quality assurance. If I'm using a non-ag network, I need to ask some questions. You know, is the weather station on the top of a building or in a parking lot or is it in a representative agricultural setting that I'm trying to model? So those are some of the things that I want to look at. I also want to look at correlation matrices. Like I said, if I have my weather, my wind speed um, indicator at a at at a different height than the standard agricultural height, do I have a parameter matrix that I can do that adjustment and and make it applicable to to my my use? Here's just some list of some of the non-agricultural networks that we looked at, and so there was a variety of them from really high level technical applications to your, you know, your school and that type things that were just kind of uh, public interest. Just a, a, an example of an ag weather station layout so you kind of see what we're looking at. We don't want to have large buildings or trees or anything that obstructing it. Site visitations, we had extensive conversations amongst ourselves. Since we're managing the Texas High Plains ET network, we talked to ourselves, we do that a lot. And then we also talked uh, extensively with the Texas Texas ET network, which is run by Guy Phipps and managed widely by, uh, largely by uh, Mr. Charles Swanson. They were very helpful and, and very informative in, in sharing their uh, management procedures and, and sharing common issues with us. Uh, the Precision Irrigators Network out of Uvalde, uh, we've had a, a long historic um, working relationship with the former manager of that network, but it has, it has since um, been decommissioned. Some of those stations have been taken up by Guy Phipps's network of the Texas ET network. The San Angelo network in the St. Lawrence region basically was decommissioned by default as people left and um, and uh, there were there weren't the, the folks to, to pick up that duty. Uh, those could just kind of went away. Other networks we visited with, of course we visited with all those um, uh, extensively some others, we were able to track them down at different meetings, regional projects, national meetings, visiting with managers from other states as well as other networks within the state of Texas. So we're able to, to contact all these and really get a lot of information. We, uh, we conducted a survey, just put a lot of questions together to find out what they're doing, what are their issues, how are they managing the data, how are they acquiring the data, what equipment sensors they use, um, how do they get the word out, um, and other issues that we could come up with as, as we were visiting.